I'm uh, Christine Hellicott Thompson. Um, art for as long as I can remember because my school books were covered in drawings. And um, I just love. I use acrylic and I use oils, uh, mostly on canvas. I love. I don't know what I really like to paint. It, it just whatever catches my eye and I think oh I'd love to try to do that on canvas and then it's an experiment can I do it and uh, it's very frustrating most of the time because it's never quite as gorgeous as the original but um, but the trying is good fun and uh, always a challenge and I guess that's part of the uh, reason why I love to do it He's, uh, this is Snowy. He's my companion, or my you could say he's my shadow, pretty much. He's always by my side. Oh, he's, he's usually in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I chose a red background for this painting because it's uh, the opposite of, or the contrast to green. And while most of it's going to disappear, it will still be there shining through in, in little places. So, we're going to start with some greens. What drew me to this forest scene, I, I was, uh, again, just driving by and I looked down the side of the road and the, the whole floor of the forest the painting is called Forest Floor, was just alive with color. It was so gorgeous. And the sun was shining through the canopy of fir trees. And and it was so inviting. I wanted to stop the car and go and have a picnic right in the middle. <laughs> Uh, one of the best things uh, one of uh, one of my t uh, teachers said. I didn't have a lot of teachers, but uh, he said, "Don't fuss," <laughs> 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 and that's good advice. The idea is to get <clears throat> the feeling down first because you can always go back and play with things and change things and put in your detail to make sure your contrasts are good. And... Okay, so there's a beginning to our foreground. Roy Carr. A painter at uh, South Kitsap, uh, he introduced me to uh, to using some different colors that I'd never, you know, really thought were too harsh for nature. But wow, if you use them the right way, magic can really happen. So it's good to always be ready to try something new. Don't let unusualness discourage you. We're going to add some white. Some more white because white makes every color colder. And further away therefore. And also makes colors grayer. Ooh, this one works. Just uh, adding a bit of brightness, the, the kind of brightness I want to the foreground. Uh, now I've grayed this color back some, so I'm going to put in some more greens back here to, to um, step the forest back. 
this is a, quite a small painting for me actually. I generally like to paint quite large. Uh, some of the largest, the largest one I've done is um, at the moment there's a 40 by 72 and that's fun I, and you know it's hard to stop because you, you get to the edge of the painting and I want to keep going. <laughs> And when, and when that happens, you know you've got something fun happening, and that's that's always good. So you can see here how how much grayer these yellows and these greens are back here. I wouldn't worry about things not being quite perfect at this point because you have all the time in the world to change it and adjust it and fiddle with it. Um, but to me, I like to get the whole gist of the painting in and down and then uh, refine it. The contrast between warm and cold colors it helps to add interest to the painting the contrast between the softness of the forest floor and then the hard lines of the trees adds another kind of contrast so that's always fun in a painting too we like to get lots of different things happening it's like a story you kind of weave I love the forest. I love the chaos of it. The gorgeous creative chaos of a forest is it just so inspirational, so fabulous. I never get tired of it. And all the different seasons, spring, summer, and fall, and it just is gorgeous. I'm I'm lucky to live uh, near a, a, a wonderful walk through a forest with a lot of ferns and huge trees and, and it's just says uh, it's just beautiful yeah even when you thin the paint down real thin you still have orange peeking through and that gives the whole thing a warmth and a, a depth that you wouldn't get on a white ground. No, you won't. Don't fuss. Okay, one main tree, another one back there, leaning the same way. Here's another thing to do in a painting, have variation, have some sameness, and then have some differences. And you see we've got a bit of a rhythm going already. Some trees going this way, some going that way. And all the different sizes are fun. The similarities are fun. And your eye can just bounce around and enjoy all the differences. And so you build your paint, and then you add your, you know, your little 
different bit, bits and pieces, maybe some moss, maybe some cloud or whatever. Uh, and you get as much detail and as fancy as you like. And of course these close tree trunks can have a lot of detail in them. And the forest floor can just really, you know, just go for a walk and look at everything that's around. And oh boy, it's a, just a feast. And so you add as many trees or as few trees as you like, different kinds of trees. And you just have fun and uh, don't fuss. <laughs>